What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about something that has never happened in history before. We have never had $5 per gallon gas. The highest gas has ever been is actually right now. Before we broke the previous record, which was $4.11 in 2008, it's been pretty much under that. But I have a feeling that we're going to see $5 per gallon gas this year. I'm gonna talk about why we're gonna see that. And I'm gonna talk about how inflation is actually higher than 7.9%. It was 7.5% in November, and last month it was 7.9%. 7 so what we're seeing is inflation running rampant, and this is why the Fed is gonna have a meeting to start buffering up these interest rates. But I'm gonna tell you something. The raising of these interest rates is not gonna stop inflation. It's not gonna stop inflation. We're gonna talk about that and a lot more. Also, I've gotten my game together. Uh, today was supposed to be the first day of training, but I've learned. I didn't let people know and I didn't send out the email. So next Sunday, March 20th, we begin the first day of live training. Plus I'm gonna be putting some stuff in the course this week to help you guys um, get adjusted. And then next month, we're gonna get into a serious thing. So the link is below. All right, so the previous gas, highest gas we had was $4.11 in 2008, which was the beginning of the last recession. Very interesting. So I feel, and I'm gonna give you out the factors why we're gonna see $5 gas this year. First of all, we had a supply chain issue. This is a big problem, supply chain issue with computer chips with sour cream and onion chips. I did get my sour cream and onion chips. So we've got a vast um, variety of issues, but here's the thing. I went out last night and I went to a place that I've been going to um, for many years and it was a normal Saturday night. Now, what do I mean when I say that? The crowd that was in this restaurant, only the staff was wearing masks, no one's wearing masks, was at pre-pandemic levels. So what does this mean? And this is why we're gonna have $5 gas. Uh, I had a friend who was flying on the plane, the airport is back to normal. So what we're having with this age of supply chain shortages is a return to normal demand airports, some restaurants, not all restaurants. And one of the big issues we're having is we're having this return to normal without the full staff that we would have had at pre-pandemic levels. One of the things that has happened, and this is one of the reasons that demand is up, is everyone is not participating in the workforce that could. So these missing bodies, especially on the lower economic scale, on the lower wage jobs, is creating panic, drama, and in some cases trauma, because these businesses are finding it very hard to operate. So this is creating an, an increased demand over here because they don't have enough workers. And then the price of diesel, okay? Price of diesel is above five bucks. So for truckers, the high cost of gas is already in play of diesel. And what does this mean? Everything is going up. Name one item that you have in your house that got somewhere 
that it didn't get somewhere on the truck. Name one item, including the shingles on your roof, including the lumber in your walls, including the sheetrock. Name one item that you have in your house from the stuff in your kitchen that didn't get to where you got it from by truck. Name one. You can't. Everything that you have in your house got somewhere by truck. And since diesel is going up, the price of everything is going to go up because what they're going to do is factor in the cost of this new diesel price and they're going to pass it on to the consumers. Thus, lumber is going up, milk's going up, eggs going up, meat's going up, computers are going up, TV, everything is going up. Now, with this Russia-Ukraine war that is going on right now, I don't think this is going to be something that's going to be over quickly. Russians have proven to be quite stubborn. So I don't think that this is something that's going to be over in a few weeks or a few months. And the longer this goes on, the more that it forced Western, mostly Western countries, which incidentally are the highest consumers of oil and gas, United States, China, Japan, Europe. These are the highest consumers of gas like places like Bali and Thailand, they run around on motorcycles. They're, they don't consume nowhere near as much gas as we do in the United States of America. So with this war pushing people who would normally buy gas from Russia, and make no mistake, there are still people who are buying gas from Russia. There are still people buying gas, there are still people buying oil from Russia. But as the longer this goes on, and with the economic sanctions that they want to put on Russia, it's going to get more and more expensive for gas. For the first time in history, we might see regular unleaded gas at five bucks a gallon. Now, what does that mean? If your car takes 12 gallons to fill up, you're now going to take $60. I remember, uh, I have all these cars, these rental cars that run on premium. I filled up the Porsche one day because the guy brought it back on bone empty. It was $115. I don't even remember what the car, I remember it was $115 to fill up the tank of that car. I don't remember the price per gallon, but I know it was premium. And in some places, premium gas is already five bucks per gallon, some places. So what we're gonna see is five bucks per gallon for regular gas. We're gonna see about 520, 530, maybe 540 for mid-grade. And then we're gonna see five to six, 550 to six bucks per premium. And what is this is gonna do? It's gonna create such a big economic shock because once again, I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys don't want to believe. I had one person that was saying that average income in America was $60,000 a year. It's not, it's not even close to 60. So a lot of people don't want to believe that 75% of Americans in the workplace, and let's go ahead and identify that there's 160 million people so literally 100 million people plus in the American workforce don't make over $35,000 a year. To have $5 per gallon gas is going to change behavior. It's going to change what people do. It's going to, because once again, this $5 per ga gallon of gas is going to impact everything. Diesel will probably be at six, 620, 650 per gallon. So as the price of gas, and like I said, the price of gas is gonna keep going up. It's not gonna just hit a level and just stop or they're gonna flood the market with oil. That ain't happening. Which means, 
Let's talk about inflation. We were told that inflation was 7.5%, okay? The average house in Florida went up 30%. Now, houses across the country, you can still buy houses in Alabama, Mississippi, at an affordable rate. So the skyrocketing housing prices has been like California, it's all on the West Coast, it's in Dallas, it's in Atlanta, it's in the big cities, it's in the big cities. So I was just crunching some numbers and there is no way that inflation could only be 7.5% for November and now in February, 7.9%. There's no way when the price of houses and rent have dramatically gone up. Inflation is running probably, true inflation is probably running 15 to 20% right now. And what does that mean? That means that we're in for a rocky ride because inflation actually went up from November to February, inflation actually went up. And once again, inflation was caused by the STEMI economy. And let me break down to why inflation was caused by the STEMI economy. In 2008, 9, 10, during that recession, we just had a recession. We didn't have inflation. Now, the STEMI economy shut down a lot of businesses and during the shutdown like have you ever taken a long vacation you ever taken the like I mean, when I talk about long vacation I'm talking about a month or two when you go back to work it literally takes you weeks weeks to get back to normal it takes you weeks to get back to normal okay so we had an economy the largest economy in the world literally shut down for months. And we had many ramifications in this economy. We had the ramifications of people having the ability to stay at home and not work and to be cared for, to get a stimulus check, to get enhanced unemployment, to get, you know, in businesses, like, you know, there were some people who was like, it wasn't the stimulus money that caused the recession, that, that caused the coming recession. I vigorously disagree and I'm about to lay out to you because we had trillions of dollars enter into the phantom economy. Trillions between when you look at what they did with the stimulus checks, when you look at what they did with the enhanced unemployment, when you look at the PPP program, and when you look at the EDL loans, and then, oh, let's not even talk about the pumping the Fed was doing with QE. So we had trillions of dollars, trillions, enter into this phantom economy that wasn't based upon marketplace forces, wasn't placed upon marketplace dynamics, wasn't placed upon real supply and demand. We saw Uber drivers making like six figures because so many Uber drivers didn't want to drive. So what we saw was all of this stimulus money enter the economy, which had exaggerated sectors. And then once the stimulus money left the economy and stopped stimulating, and we saw the real neck of the economy, that's when everything just fell. Because there was nothing to replace the stimulus money businesses like once again if you've been watching this channel for a while i was talking about how weak the economy was in 2018 2017 and once again this pandemic was just triggered a lot of nasty repercussions so with all of this stimulus money entering the economy i want you to think what will happen if you had let's just go ahead and paint this picture you had, you were a fat person, right? 
and you had 10 men, 10 really strong men holding you up, right? You were holding up and these 10 men, they were holding you up by the butt and the legs, right? And then two of the men left and then those eight men had to burden that. Then two more men left. Then two more men left. Then two more men left. Then all the men left and bam, you fell on your fat ass. That's what's happening to the economy. Without the 10 men being there to uphold the fat man, the economy just drops. And it doesn't just drop. Going back to the supply chain, remember all of those ships that were off the coast of California? They're still there. So we have, so what's gonna happen is at some point, we're going to have an overabundance of supplies hit the market, which is just going to crash some prices. It's not going to crash gas prices. It's not going to crash housing prices, but it's going to crash consumer prices. But here's the thing. Right now, a lot of people have pulled back. A lot of people are being real careful with their money. So, when all of this stuff hits the market and at some point housing is going to crash because builders pull permits across the country for 1.5 million homes that are currently not on the market. And when those homes hit the market, that is going to adjust housing prices dramatically. And I predict this is going to be 2023 because they gotta build these homes, they gotta grade the lands, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna take some time. But 2023, these 1.5 million homes are gonna hit the market. And at this point, we will see an adjustment in housing inflation, we will see an adjustment in consumer pricing inflation, but here's the thing. The things you need, food, gas, that's not going to go down. That's going to keep going up. That's going to keep going up. Remember the last time we had a, we, we, we didn't have a uh, high gas price. We had an oil embargo where you can only buy gas on certain days for your car, depending upon either your tag or your birthday. And when we had this oil embargo, this is when Detroit started putting out these economy cars. We're going to see a lot of people, and I feel that there's going to be a boon to electric car use. Now, will they drop the prices of electric cars? Because Teslas are pretty expensive. Uh, the Lucid Air is pretty expensive. So we don't have in my, you know, I haven't done the research because I'm not a big EV advocate, you know, of electric cars. And every time I get an electric car, it's always so whimsical because you hear that that whirring sound and um but i feel that we will see a lot of people adapt to electric cars because of the high price of gas i think you're going to see a lot a big transition of that and you know we're going to see the marketplace create cheaper electric vehicles because i don't see the price of gas going down this year. I just see, it. like I said, we're gonna see $5 gas. The highest a gallon of gas has ever been is right now, which is 417. That's the highest price that gas as a regular gallon of gas has been. It's gonna go higher and it's gonna go higher and it's gonna go higher and it's not gonna come down. And this is one of the things that we will see for a duration of maybe a year before it starts to go down because it always you know it goes up and then it comes down like in 2008 it was 411 a gallon and it went down now it's going back up now it's 417 a gallon and this is going to change a lot of behavior like i don't know and this is something i'm seeing when I was a kid, it was a big thing to get your driver's license. It was huge. And it was a big thing to get a car. And it was a big thing just to get in your car and just go nowhere. 
that is going to change. People are not going to be doing that anymore. People are not like there was something that was called a Sunday drive. You would get in your car and you would just ride out, go maybe get some ice cream or something. Mm -mm, people are not doing that. You know what's funny? Let me share something with you guys. I don't go to the grocery store. I do Instacart. I don't really like there are some restaurants that are my favorite. I don't really don't go to the restaurants. I am very much convenience based. If it's like, if it's a little bit of hassle, I'm not doing it. And I feel that there are many other people like that because I'm a big DoorDash person. I do a lot of DoorDash. I do DoorDash maybe five days a week and not gotten to Uber Eats, but you're going to see a big change in like farming. The, the sale of farmland is about to explode because you're gonna have people who have money who are looking at the tea leaves and they're like, I don't like how these tea leaves are shaping up. And they're gonna go out and get them to the 10 acres, build a house on it and start farming. Because food is gonna get stupid, stupid, stupid high. Food and gas is gonna be stupid high. Your electric bill is gonna be stupid high. Your gas bill is gonna be stupid high. The things that you need will always be expensive. They will always go up in price. The things that you need, the things that you want or you don't necessarily need, they, they will not be that expensive at some point in the future. Because right now with the high cost of gas and the factoring of diesel, diesel is super high right now. The cost of everything is going up, everything. My glasses are going up. The faucet on my sink is going up. This trash can is going up. My coffee maker's going up. My alcohol is going up. All that stuff is going up. Anything that has to be transported to a warehouse and then transported to a store, the vehicles that take these items from warehouses to the warehouses run on diesel. The items, the, these things that take it from the warehouse to the store, they often run on diesel. So we're going to see a vast cost increase on literally everything. And this will be temporary because once the market, um, the supply chain corrects itself and then the market gets flooded with all these goods and services, then the, the price will collapse except for gas, except for food and Housing is going to be real interesting. I don't think that the price of housing is going to collapse in 2022. Uh, there are many people predicting it. I don't think because they can't build those houses that fast. It takes six to 12 months to build a house and they just pull these permits and a lot of these builders just got financing. So it's going to be 2023 before I see we see a big correction in housing prices and there will be a big correction. Uh, there are many YouTubers who are saying don't buy a house. There's a lot of people who are saying don't buy a house. Just sit back and wait. Not like terribly long, like you don't have to wait five years because this is going to happen within the next nine to 15 months. So you don't have to worry about sitting in, you know, renting. That's just one more year for most people. And like I was talking to some real estate investors. I was talking to some real real estate investors and they say the market is trash right now. Uh, most of them are just sitting on their money because it's like they can't find deals. They just cannot find deals because it's like they could buy a house and they could overpay and then be stuck with inventory that they would have to dump at a price less than what they paid for. That's not fun. So yeah, we're on track to see $5 per gallon gas, which is a game changer. This, 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 this is, this year is going to be really intriguing for a lot of people. It's going to be really harsh for a lot of people. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know with the well-constructed comments from the nerd tribe. I really appreciate you guys. I will see you in the next one.